Well, hello everyone. You hear that thunder? It's raining this morning. I hope you guys are doing well in my life. I have a special occasion coming up, Bub and I do. It's our 16th wedding anniversary. It's on Friday. Today's Thursday that I'm shooting this. I guess you'll see it the day after. That'll probably be the day that we have a date night or something. And I love getting ready for a date night. I love doing something a little bit special. And I thought, you know, why not use your fancy stuff? Like you got some high-end products, use them, you know, enjoy them. And whereas last week we did a drugstore shop my stash, let's do a luxury shot my stash this week so that's what we're gonna do so I done shot my stash and I put it all in this bag and yeah it's just gonna be a big old variety so the first thing I'm gonna use is this say what was this stuff called glowy super gel in star glow so this is kind of a primer one of those kind of multi-purpose glowy creamy things so I'm putting this all over and you're gonna see that glow um, it adds some moisture and the glowiness is interesting because I, I don't really see shimmer but you know it, there, there is some luminosity in this for sure need a little bit more for the forehead gives the skin a really pretty look before we even put makeup on like i actually think that looks glowing and so nice like these glowy primers man sometimes you could put those on and feel like hey nothing else is necessary oh we're gonna do a few more things though my friend we are going to keep it going. And I'm going to use my Dior Forever foundation. Now in my foundations, among my like fuller coverage things, I have a small range of shades. You know, I have things that work best when I'm a lighter, things that just mesh better when it's the dead of winter, things that might work better in the summer. Um, I thought this might be more of a summertime shade. It is 3CR and they call this 24 hour high wear perfection skin caring foundation with sunscreen. And I have liked this foundation. I kind of feel like this foundation foundation, one full pump here, gives me a similar experience to the uh, Too Faced Born This Way matte. You know, a nice, long-wearing, good coverage foundation. The Born This Way matte is darn near indestructible. Um, this might have a slightly more natural look on the skin, but it does wear well. So I'm just going to dab it in with the Beauty Blender. As you can see, I swiped on my pump all over. And really, the more time you spend on TikTok, the more you realize that some people are using way, way more than a pump on their skin. And YouTube too, for that matter. Like, you'll see people swipe on pump, 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 and I'm like, that's four times the amount of what I'm wearing on my skin. And I thought the one pump did a good job. And it really does. I think you should start there with products. And then if you absolutely need more, I guess put on more, but to each his own. You know, I'm, I'm getting a little fed up with makeup rules, actually. Do your eye this way. Don't do it this way. How about do your eye how you want to do it? Yes, take tips. Yes, grow and experiment and expand your horizons. But if you love doing, let's say, your eyes a certain way. There was one, like, little dry piece that had, I think, accumulated around the pump right there. That's what I was struggling with. But if you got the way you like doing things, like, I enjoy thinking of makeup as a rules-free space. You know, you do things because you want to do them. And that's all the reason you really need, you know? Okay, so I've got that all blended in. Yeah, I do think it's a little lighter coverage than the Born This Way matte. And you know, it's also just not quite as matte. It's a long wearing foundation. And I would definitely put like Maybelline Superstay up against this because I think it works probably just as well. But you stick to that one pump and you put it on over the dewy highlighter and stuff. It really has a pretty natural look. Concealer is going to be a two step process. Um, I have really been reaching for my Bobbi Brown corrector stick a lot. I hadn't been using this quite so much, but I feel like bringing it back today. It's my Becca and Smash box. You know, they kind of collaborated when Becca went bye-bye so they could keep putting out this product, which I think is amazing. Under eye brightening corrector, I have the Fair to Light shade and it is like really light and brightening. And another really special thing about this product is the texture. It's super creamy. So when you put this on and maybe you want to layer on a little bit of a skin tone concealer, your skin has been offered some moisture. It's not like dry product after dry product going on your skin. So see that? I'm just patting it in right in here and then I think I'm going to use my beauty blender to finish the job. As excited as I was to get ready today and shoot this video, when your room is just a little bit on the cool side and you're hearing the pitter patter of raindrops and maybe a little thunder in the distance and you're all cozy under your blanket, it's a little hard to wake up. You just kind of want to stay there. Patting all over that with my Beauty Blender. See how brightening that really is? I'm going to take the end of my e.l.f. brush here just to make sure my inner corners are nice and blended in. 
And then a concealer I love. Like, I would put it way ahead of this foundation. This Dior Forever Skin Correct that I wear in one end. I've used a good amount of this stuff and I love the way it wears. I love the coverage. I feel like it just doesn't look makeup-y at all, but it's a really good coverage. So I usually go with a couple dots of it right in there and a little bit kind of swooping up. And we'll hit the nose too, just cause I have my little red areas that even though currently the foundation might be covering them, sometimes as the day rolls on, if I don't specifically hit those areas with concealer, there's the oil production, the, the sweat, the fade, and going over with some concealer is kind of like, you know, a little makeup insurance move. So I do really like this stuff and I'm just going to take my beauty blender. And as I tap over those dots that are there, I'm now like spreading them over that broader surface area of the under eye. That whole kind of plane of the face for brightness. So I've mentioned it on Instagram. I also talked about it in my description box one day at the bottom of my little random thought area. But I absolutely love this service called Farmer's Fridge. And this is not sponsored. I've been paying for it and this is now going to be my fourth or fifth week getting it. It's salads. It's salads in little jars. And if you've heard of it, if it seems familiar, um, they have like little salad vending machines basically in airports. Um, some people who work in like larger hospitals or just various corporate offices might have access to this stuff. But the salads are delicious and they're packaged in such a way that yes, the lettuce stays nice and leafy and not soggy and everything that's added into it is so good. I can honestly tell you everything I've eaten has been delicious, but my top favorite one is the caprese salad. Um, the Greek salad is really good as well. Here's what I love so much about these salads. First off, I can make my own salad. I know how to make a salad, but I like the variety. I like that I can pull for the barbecue chicken one and I'm like, okay, this is gonna give me one whole kind of taste. And then the caprese is gonna taste completely different from that. And then the little burrito bowl is so good. And that's a whole other vibe. Having that variety is so nice. And then if you're a texture person, which I am, I'm not one who gets a kick out of sitting there and slicing the same piece of meat and taking a bite and having another piece of steak and taking a bite and blah, blah, blah. I like interesting textures and there's so much of that. Like the caprese one has couscous in it and some little sesame sticks and you got your tomatoes and you got the spinach and it just comes together so well and your dressing is just in its own little sealed off cup by the way so you can manage how much of that you want to put on your salad but they're big salads and they're really really good the turkey cob one I thought was super yummy although I'm not a huge egg in my salad person I like egg salad but I don't love the egg in my salad, but it's not like all shredded up in there. You can kind of pick it out if you don't love it. I'll still eat it, but it's just like that wasn't my favorite element. But that's all I can think of that was remotely not something I loved. Like everything has been so good. Um, there's a corn salad they call il Ilote. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That one's bomb. I love that one too. North Napa one was good. My gosh, I could go on and on. I feel like I've tried almost everything so far, except for a couple that I should be getting this week, the ones I haven't yet tried. I have a link I can share that'll save you some money, so I'll put that in there. And I'm still not sure, I gotta be honest with you, if you start this and you start sharing that link, I've asked them on Instagram, like, how does, how do I know that this link is benefiting me? I'm not sure how or when I get credited, basically, but whatever the case, even if I get no, like, money back on <laughs> sharing about this, that's not what it's about. I personally love it. I think you should know about it. And it's just the ability to, like, okay, I'm over here, I'm getting lunch for three little kids, blah, 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 they got all their things they need, and then I can just take this nice fresh jar of salad, screw off the top, pop it in, and then you have this jar that's super nice. I'm like saving all my jars, uh, put snacks in them, use them for, gosh, anything. I love Farmer's Fridge, love it. So we're here, that concealer is more than blended now. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm really talking about something and I have a brush or sponge in my hand, I just kind of go on autopilot and I don't even know what I'm doing. I wanted to pull out today my normal Laura Mercier, the, the original translucent powder, because I just kind of wanted to compare the experience to the new one and just see what I notice. Also, I have a new Real Techniques setting brush. I'm still using my one that's missing the end handle part for highlighter, but I thought, you know, what if I tried this also for under eye setting? Because it can get right in there. 
but I just wanted to see like what do I feel is the difference. This is a really fine powder too. I don't think it's necessarily how fine it is. Maybe there's just a little more like slip to the ultra blur. I'm dabbing it around and really setting. But yeah, I look up closer and maybe it looks a little drier after I've put this on. Just a little bit. Just like being picky, you know? The other one, it was interesting how really undetectable the new ultra blur looks. Like up on the under eye. Kind of reminds me of Kosas Cloud scent. But this... Gosh, I do like it. I feel like it maybe made some areas even more flawless looking. It made the nose seem even more poreless looking. I'm not saying it took away my pores, but gives less of an appearance of them. It's a great powder. Reminds me a lot of exactly what happens when I put on my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder. I think their Ultra Blur somehow is just even less visible as powder on the skin. Yep, I do kind of see a difference. All right, for face like color steps, my contour, my blush, I wanted to pull this out. I love this little palette um, from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Nudegasm Face Palette. Do they still sell this? It's so good. It's so good. And you guys know I don't always rave about everything under the sun that Charlotte Tilbury makes, but I have really enjoyed this palette. I thought it was well done. You got two like shades of contour that are really pretty cool. This deeper one can come off just a little more sunny looking on the skin, I guess. It gives you that little bit more depth, like you've seen the sun, you know. But the other one is a great, just natural contour, super cool contour shade. The blush shows up really pretty. Um, beautiful highlight. I thought it was a well done face quad, really. So I've just been taking that deepest color and working it in around my hairline a bit. What makes this look date night? You know, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm thinking about staying power. I'm thinking about just like looking my best and most flawless. But really, like, I like to think, I, I enjoy makeup so much that I kind of put the same care into my look on random days as I do even a special day. Like, I, I really enjoy the process any day. And that's really the big thing that makeup is about for me. It's enjoying the process. I don't do it because I gotta do it. I do it because I get to do it and I love the time in the day that is mine and getting to do what I want. And here we've just like dusted this contour all over. I've used a little bit of both. I want a little bit more of that deep one up here. For some reason, you gotta go in, you gotta really pull that hair back. See, pretty, natural, good. Then I'm going in with this blush, which is so pretty, and you're gonna look at it and be like, okay, light, barely there peach, what's the appeal? I'll show you. It's not barely there. It actually has this really beautiful amount of color that doesn't scream peach at me so much as just like, healthy glow lit from within, you know? And it does have some sheen. The, these are matte down here, but these two do have sheen. I love the way that looks. It's just, it's so not in your face, but it's really, really pretty. Then I'm gonna take, you know, the old guns here. This is my Real Techniques setting brush. And I go into that highlight and it's so, so pretty. Yes, I want the glow. I didn't do two concealers and a setting powder to not go in and have a pretty gleam now. I don't know, you know, going off of what I said earlier, there are some days where, yes, you're, you're doing a quick look, you're doing something that doesn't take as long, you're doing something that's less involved, let's say, but it's like, I still feel like I care about the look that day, you know, I still care about the products, I still usually probably have something I'm testing out, trying to learn more about, find out more about. Look how pretty this is, just the gleam. No big shimmer particles though. I love that. And then I pulled out another thing because as I was looking through blushes, I was like, oh yeah, I wanna use that too. I had like 10 blushes I wanted to put in this look, but this is the one um, I grabbed out because I was like, I never used this. I remember buying this in Chicago when I was there with Kristen Game a couple of years ago, and it's the Cheek to Chic Swish and Pop Blusher in Love is the Drug. It's a really pretty, like, kind of vibrant pink. And I just thought, you know, it might be fun to do a little extra pop, just a little. How fresh, 
Yes, it's fresh. But I wouldn't have had to have done that. I definitely used this blush with total satisfaction. This is just me wanting to put more products on my skin. For a setting spray, I pulled out my uh, one from Rare Beauty here that I hadn't used in a while. It's the Always an Optimist 4-in-1 Mist. They say to shake it well. Um, as I was watching Selena in that show, Only Murders in the Building, I found myself wondering how much Rare Beauty does she have on right now? Mm, nice mist. Kind of soothing spa vibes in the uh, scent of it. I dig that. And then I kind of go over with the beauty blender because there might have been a droplet or two that was a little bit large. See, I love that skin. That skin someone could come up close to and I don't feel like I am super caked with anything. The layers have been thin. I was thinking I forgot a brow product, but I know what I wanna use. I went ahead and ordered this from Jones Road. It's called the Brow Pencil and the shade is a brunette. And it's just like a chubby, little brow pencil. You know Bobby Brown with Jones Road is all about ease and this sure is easy. So I'm just kind of taking that over the whole brow area. I've used this a time or two. It's really nice actually. This pencil feels not incredibly soft. It's just, it's a good texture. And so I'll take this through. This product I feel could benefit from a spoolie because you are possibly going to get a decent amount in your brows at once. I think I have spoolies, so that's fine. I feel like I'm benefiting from that little rake through. What else did I order? I got, oh, the um, Tawny Miracle Balm, and I got another blush stick as well. So yeah, I really did like Jones Road, and I've definitely gone on to um, use the What the Foundation quite a few times since the video. I like it. You just have to kind of know the purpose, know the intent behind products and know that, okay, this is not going to be like Dior Forever Foundation. It's going to be super hydrating, not a ton of coverage, but you can get your coverage by adding in concealer. So it's all good. I've really liked using that after maybe I've spent the previous day like in the sun quite a bit and it just like soothes the face and it feels kind of luxurious, you know, although an oily skinned person, it may not be doing you too many favors. All right. So we filled in the brows. Did I do that well enough? I kind of feel like I'm lacking a little control with the size of this pencil. Like it'll be something you definitely want to keep kind of whittled down and sharpened. But the tone is great, that uh, brunette color. And then I say just take your spoolie on through. And then I was looking through, I could hardly find a brow gel or something that might be from a high-end brand, but I do have this Rose Ink eyebrow gel that came in that little set of products. You remember when I tried like the blush and there were some different things. It's kind of like a creamy gel. I don't like it any better than NYX Control Freak, but she's fine. For the eyes, I'm going to use this Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Look how they've repackaged, guys. I know we're straying from Milani Eyeshadow Primer, but this will work okay. I used to use this constantly in my earlier days, and I felt like I always had one on hand because, like, if I would get the Too Faced holiday sets, they would always, a lot of them would come with the mini eyeshadow insurance. There's a kitten at my door. BRB. Biscuits is my early bird. She'll always be an up early. What is the eye palette I picked? I went with this one. This is from Viseart. It's available on Beautylish, mm -hmm. the Bijouette, and this is so pretty and I haven't used it yet. Using it today for the first time. I'm not planning to do like a rainbow eye. I don't know how much I'll get into the bottom row, but maybe the top couple rows I was kind of envisioning might be a pretty look. So overall though, a really bold palette, and I'm going to start with this shade up here, like this kind of lightest beigey shade for a crease. You know we're just getting warmed up with that crease. Kittens were a little thrown by the thunder in the night. I had uh, at least one cat up on the bed <laughs> crawling around meowing. I love fizzy art. Like I really need to use more of what I have for sure. And I feel like they're kind of scaling down doing like a little bit smaller pans and making prices a bit more reasonable on stuff. I'm really liking this color and how it's shearing out. We're just going to kind of shear it out to nothingness and then I can layer in. I can go a little deeper. This shade right down here is a little bit richer. Let's add. Oh yeah, love that. They're normally like, well, I guess the last video, they also came up. I guess they come up when they hear my voice. That's what draws them upstairs. They only come when I shoot videos. Those two 
merge beautifully. They don't look that far off from one another, but the deeper one really adds to the look. I love that. I might pull in just a bare blending brush. This one's from Morphe. Just a nice little kind of controlled size. So it's great for hitting the edge of what you're blending. You know, you don't want to sweep over the whole thing, but just get your edge. Nice. I got to investigate this girl right here. This kind of cranberry color. Let's pull that on in. Oh, I'm loving. I love the richness of the color choices in this palette, you know? I look at the bottom row and I think, like, summer fun. And then I look at the top two rows and I think, fall. These shades are so what you see is what you get, you know, nicely pigmented. August is really the gateway to fall month, is it not? This will be the month that I get out my fall decor again. I haven't done that yet. I'm still feeling very summery vibes, but it'll be soon. Ooh, and I'll need to do something fall themed with my garland back here. I haven't had a fall garland up. I only started doing the garland around the window this past Christmas and just fell in love with that, you know, in my background so much I kept doing it. Let's see, I'm, I'm very olive. This shade looks so bright on camera, but it looks deeper in person, but it's still, mm, I don't think I wanna go that bright. Yes, little miss. Yes, little miss. They're like, who's she talking to? She must be talking to us. I'm going to take some of this rich brown and I'm gonna begin putting that in my outer corner. Oh, that is just nice dark cocoa, yes. So I'm patting it on and then I'll do a little bit of blending, but I'm definitely like getting in the crease with this. To my few bold and beautiful watchers out there, Finn and Steffi back together, it's so great. However, Deacon, I really wish he would have given up Sheila at that moment instead of just saying, you know, you can't stay here. I don't want you involved in my life. But in that moment, when the cop's knocking at the door, he made the decision to not just say, yeah, she's right here. Although I think he might have thought they would believe he'd been hiding her for some time when she just kind of showed up on his doorstep. But he should have never let her in. I'm just using this little Profusion Small Pointed brush to move around some of that rich brown shadow. You know, um, it got applied with a flat brush to the outer lid and to the crease. And I'm just kind of making sure it's meshing with everything. It's so pretty, these, these browns. Like, I know it's nothing maybe super remarkable in the color department, especially considering everything else that's in this palette, but they do look so nice together. And the way that brown, that dark brown is kind of cooler, you know, um, it's really a pretty merging. By the way, I'm just wearing this little like green tank top today, but whenever we do have our date, I've got a cute little like olive green dress. So it will still be kind of this, this vibe. This may not be the date night tonight, but this is the, you know, in honor of. Um, so I'm gonna go into this orange and it does have some little teeny tiny like golden flecks in it but I think it's mainly gonna be this pumpkin-y color punch. By the way, Tree Hut is putting out a pumpkin spice scrub. I'm gonna get it, I, I'm gonna order that. This is pretty. Okay, so that's going center of the lid. Really nice. And then I think maybe this little bronze. Ooh, that's fun alongside. It's a little lighter than the orange and obviously has some shimmer so it pulls a little you know brightness to that area the more brassy or yellowy looking gold could have been pretty right here as well do you guys want out i mean i love this kind of look i'm gonna keep going a little smoky with it i'm gonna use that dark brown small pointed brush from profusion and the thing about viseart shadows i feel like they have a really good staying power like they do a good job truly adhering, staying true to color for a long time. So I do kind of trust this shade down in here. Mm. Oh my gosh, you guys, I got a label maker. It's so much fun. Um, Biddy's school supplies are supposed to all be labeled with her name. And do you know how much fun it is to put type in a little E and then it gives you a little sticker and then you snip off the sticker and you put it on the stuff. It's awesome. And then you pack up the book bag with all the things. Yeah, I took control of that situation. Sorry. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Mommy's making sure all the supplies get in the bag. You get to school, you do what you want with it. All right. 
That is so lovely. Dang, we went full on fall today, did we not? Where are you guys? They're exploring every square inch of this room. I'm gonna use my one size Point Made eyeliner in Bodacious Black. Love this eyeliner. This is one of the longest wearing eyeliners for sure. It has a nice long tip, so you can kind of like, yes, thunder, yes. Not even mad. Um, <laughs> nice long tip, easy to lay down on its side, go across the lash line. Thunder's still going. The thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. Really nice black intensity. I'm not winging this one. I'm just, you know, letting it live, letting it be on my lash line. I love these kittens so much. Like, I can't even tell you. They're perfect. They're perfect in every single way. And then, this is what I was really excited about. This came in PR just the other day. It's from Makeup Forever. They've got a new double-ended mascara, Step 1 Lift, Step 2 Volume. We're just gonna try it out today. I love how, like, I've got all my products sitting here and everything's kind of like this color, this color, these vibes, nude vibes, and then my eye products, red and black. So first off, we're curling. So Step 1, the Lift Step. Ooh, it's tiny. Look at that, it's like Lash Discovery. Okay. It's like Lash Discovery or Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. I'm putting it on. It doesn't look like much, but you know, primer steps don't have to. Step one lifts and separates lashes. Step two builds volume and intensity. They say 24 hour wear, sweat proof and flake free. It came all presented in a nice little box. I was like, oh, she's special. And I've been so into the two step mascara process these days with my uh, CoverGirl lash primer. So this interests me. Okay, back to step one, with our teensy little brush going in. Anybody know what Frito Pie is? I kind of made a crock pot version of that that I found on Pinterest. It's really a lot like making just a really thickened up chili. And then you just like put a lot of Fritos in it, mix it up, some cheese, some sour cream. It's not super duper healthy, but it's extremely yummy. Okay, step two, volume. There we are, more of a traditional brush, tapered at the tip, clean off that tip, it comes off with a lot. And I can tell going over step one, step one dried really fast. And I bet that's part of the magic. I bet they know. The reason why they called that lift was because that stuff was gonna get on there and seal quick the way hairspray does, you know? And maybe that's what's gonna like help maintain curl. That's the trouble, you know, goopy lash primers that don't dry fast, all they can do is just weigh your lashes down. This is building, it's, it's having kind of a slow build right now, but she is building. I was watching a TikTok last night and this woman pranked her husband and it was so funny, but he got so mad. Like, do you get legitimately angry if someone pranks you? Like, I've been pranked a lot of times and I will absolutely scream, but in two seconds, I'm probably laughing about it, you know? This guy was mad. They called it like the speaker prank or something. Like she had this little faint voice coming through a speaker and the guy comes in and she, so she's got him on camera and he's like looking for it. And he's starting to seem scared. And then all at once she like pops in the door and starts flashing the light switch. And he's like, I just wanted to take my shower. <laughs> Super mad. Although that's probably why it went viral. The person who takes the prank in stride, you know, that doesn't go viral. I mean, take it from my own channel. I did the toilet is smoking with bub and I got just kind of an eye roll and a smile. Go back in my TikToks is one of my first, if not, was it my first? It was an April Fool's prank back in 2020. Back when I was dealing with all kinds of issues in my life. Okay, I've gotten through having the migraines. I've got a sick cat. I'm teaching Belle pre-K, but I have time to do this toilet smoking prank. That gives you any sense of who I am as a person. I still like to have fun, okay? I've been building this and I do feel like the curl has not gone anywhere. The primer, I think, really froze it in place. Um, I'm gonna go back and do like one more coat on each eye with step two. Sometimes it can feel a little 
little bit harder to build on something that is so dry though, you know what I mean? Sometimes when we do multiple coats of mascara, like going over, you know what it feels like to go over a completely dry step. You wonder how well things are like clinging and meshing. And it does build, don't get me wrong. It just maybe takes you a little bit of time. Like you gotta get some of this on there and then this step two begins to build on itself. And that's where the real thickness happens, I think. I hope it really is like flake free and all that jazz. I dig that, guys. Really thick and nice. Um, I'm gonna even like put a little bit of the smaller side down here. Hopefully that stays. And then I am gonna glam this all up, even though I've done all this, and this is great. I still wanna do a false lash, so I'll be right back. Hey guys, so there's the lash. It's really thick, um, but it's very pretty. It makes the eye look very smoky. It's this style from Kiss, and I cut off a decent amount. These are very long left to right. It's the Lash Couture Extensions Collection, and they're just like thick and fluffy. Like if you looked at them from the side, there's like layers of lashes. It's supposed to mimic the look you get, I guess, with lash extensions. So now we're gonna do a lip color. And this is another kind of new thing that I just got in the mail. Look at this gorgeous, stunning packaging here from M Cosmetics. They have a new thing called Everglass Lip Dew. I think they feel a lot like the True Glosses. And that's one of the best gloss formulas on the market, but they're just like, thin and kind of gel based, lightweight, thin but not too thin. They say it's a gloss serum gel hybrid with the luxurious comfort of a balm. And I'm gonna try this shade called Temptress here. It looks like the most like intense one, but all the shades are somewhat earthy seeming. Oh, I love this with this look. Look at the color, but yeah, there is some sheerness but the comfort, like I was wearing one of the other shades yesterday, one of the softer colors. I, I just loved having it on. And the packaging is just so luxe, you know? I love that shade. There's a definitely more richness in that than some of the other ones I've tried on so far. Mm, just juicy, healthy looking lips. I think I will add just a little more blush. I'm just gonna use the peachy shade from this compact. Just a little bit. Oh, I love that shade. So yeah, friends, that is my date night look. I love it. I feel really pleased with the way things came together. I got a little bit reacquainted with some things I hadn't used in a while. Always try to sum things up by talking about the top favorites. Um, I really do like this concealer duo. I thought these did well together. This also does really well on top of the Bobbi Brown Corrector too, or just on its own, the Dior Forever Skin Correct. That's probably one of my favorite high-end concealers. Wears well, doesn't look thick, but very, very nice coverage. It reminds me quite a bit actually of the Butter Silk one from One Size. Also this palette for face, that was a top thing. I really like Bijouette, even though you know I didn't really push that to the full extent. I did use a lot of the earthy shades, but I love the way they came together nonetheless. This lip color, another interesting thing, and I noticed the very same thing with the True Glosses too. You put them on, and you're like, okay, I've put on a lip gloss. Yes, it feels comfortable. It's not sticky one single bit. But as you wear it, somehow it just becomes a little more one with your lips. It becomes a little less feeling like there is product on here and a little more like just straight comfy lips. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to describe, but I really like that shade. I like how that's meshing with the tones um, on the cheeks and the eyes. So yeah, friends, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. Let me know what products you like the most and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.